Salutations guys, welcome to my very first video on my channel. Now, today's video I will be posting is going to be about a rant. And um, this video will go by a little bit quicker because this rant story that I'm about to tell originally has a really long length to it. So the rant is going to be called Daft Punk's History. And without further ado, enough talk, let's get right into the story. So Daft Punk's very first time they ever performed live is with a band called Darlin. There was two like members of the group that will later become in the future Daft Punk members of the group. One day they performed live for which everywhere else in their homeland in Paris. But one day they quit their band and two of the actual future member groups that have been predicted have decided to compose music together, and only two group guys, one named Thomas Benga and Guy Mario Crystal, if I got those names right. They first started composing music with techno house and rave music, even with the electronic sounds. One day, their first successful releasing album, called Homework, was came out on the very first year after they composed every of the first generous of music. Back then, they didn't have nothing to conceal their faces, so they decided to wear masks during their time of the music making. Later on, in the very second year, they released a newer album called Discovery. <clears throat> Sorry. And at that year, while they were making the newer songs for Discovery album, they had People called in to give them special helmet wear that were futuristic like robot helmets to conceal their faces, like finally in one of their newer albums. Later on, after the, that album passed, the third new album that came, was been released, called Human After All, was now made for even more like techno and electronic music. But this time, with their helmets changed from their outlook from the last one, this time they were more of a sh like pale, like, shiny helmets. Just, just regular pale. No LEDs attached. Anyways, and the final album that's been released for way actually really later than they ever released it was a was originally supposed to be released back in the past was Daft Punk's first Alive show back in Los Angeles, 1997. With that year of the album released, um, sorry if I said that, <clears throat> um, the very first time in many decades they have performed live in America at Coachella and Palm Springs. From there, they finally succeeded Live album that they have recorded all so during their performance was a live 2007, and then as the time went by, then in the later 2000s, they, Daft Punk has been has been called up for starting in a movie for soundtrack making called in a movie called Tron Legacy. I'm <clears throat> sorry if I'm talking like this. I just can't get my voice straight. Anyways, did you know that Daft Punk started like in the soundtrack for Tron Legacy? If nobody hasn't knew that, go look them up. They're really good at the soundtrack, especially one of my favorites called d -Rez. Anyways, moving on. And then in the final year, starting from 2013... Everybody kind of known this, not all of the people around the world, but some of them, half of them. For the whole population in America, Daft Punk had made one final album for their very release of their new music. It is mostly focused on disco and oldies to, to me, though. How I think of it is just disco and oldies. And their final album name was Random Access Memories. The following to their new album, they had collaborators with them, such as Giorgio, Pharrell, Williams, or now Rogers. Most of their collaborate collaborators 
were famous singers or com songwriters and even composers as well. Well, I guess that's it for today for this video. I hope you enjoyed the very short and fast history talk of Daft Punk. I'm sorry if I went a little bit off topic with my words, if I was slowing down or just sounding like this for the whole time. I'm just can't. I'm just practicing still with my speech, so I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you on another video. Sally.